I mean, what was the craziest thing that you saw or heard about when a drug deal went bad during that era? When, you know, when dealing with Escobar's people or whoever else. Well, you know, when, uh, when it was uh, at the uh, Dayland, I mean, uh, Dayland Mall, was it the Dayland Mall where the big shoe went? Uh, and that was, uh, that was Grishilla, uh that was the, uh, yeah, the Dayland, I think that was Dayland Mall with the big shoe and there. It was all on the TV and everything, and, uh, you know, they did a documentary about the Cocaine Cowboy. Yeah, well, that was one of the biggest crazy things I've seen. You know, a lot of, a lot of people got killed, you know what I'm saying, back in the day, you know, back in the days in the 80s, you know. Okay, so so you're starting to build up and starting to get bigger plugs, right? Like, how yeah. how big was your operation at its height? Well, you know, you know, I was uh, my operation was big. Well, I was making fifty, thirty, fifty, thirty, forty, fifty thousand, a hundred thousand a day. So it was at at a time, you know what I'm saying? When I was at my prime, you know. So I, you know, I had some, you know, I had some real success with with this. You know what I'm saying? Back in the days when I was younger. I've interviewed a lot of the, you know, a lot of kingpins right. on Vlad TV. You know, like Lil D. Yeah. Um, Ricky Ross is a, yeah. you know, Freeway Ricky is a, a regular guest. Yeah. And, you know, each of them had different ways of doing it. So, right. like, like Freeway Ricky had, like, just a big, you know, number of crack houses right. that he was controlling. By 24 years old, you were a kingpin. You were moving 100 kilos a day. You had a dozen crack houses that were making 40000 in profit a day. <laughs> and you had a network of dealers that were moving half a million crack rocks a day. When, when you look at these types of numbers, and this is all, you've laid all this out in your book, it is a staggering amount of drugs. I mean, half a million rocks a day. Like, when you look at that right now, how how do you even come to grips with it? I don't know. It's it's like, you know, that was just something I stumbled up on, you know. Uh, um, it was only when I really got in prison that I really understood uh, the magnitude. Right. You know, whereas other guys were just moving kilos and didn't really want to deal with the, the street level stuff. Right. Like, right. how were you running your operation at the time? Well, to be honest with you, you know, it was... It, uh, I started out. I started out as, uh, you know, I was like Ricky. You know what I'm saying? I had traps. What they call traps? You know what I mean? I had spots. And then you know, as you go along, you know what I'm saying? You you kind of like, you know, go to another level with it, and you start selling weight and different things like that. But you know, you know, uh, Ricky's smart guy. You know what I'm saying? The trap is a little bit more safer because you know it's a little bit more low key because you're not really out there. You know. A deal when you when you start dealing with weight and, and you know hand in hand with the weight and stuff like that you know and th things could go bad real fast. Did you have any drug deals that went bad? No, nah, you know I always been a smooth criminal. You know what I'm saying? And I always always tried to like uh you know kind of like you know scout you know kind of like you know stake things out before I move you know. But you know I had a bad deal when I got knocked off because I I, I wound up getting jammed up. Well, along with the rise of the D boys was the the Jack boys. Yeah, you know yeah, that the people that would you know who didn't feel like dealing drugs. They would rather rob the drug dealers. Exactly. So was this going on around you? Oh yeah, at back you got to understand, right? I came up with the sour posse and all them, you know, and the ah. Jamaican rob, you know, the robbers of the Jamaicans and all that. I came up in that area, you know what I'm saying? But it's just like this, you know, it's just like the jungle, like in the jungle. You know, predators respect predators, you know what I'm saying? And you know, you know, if you're soft, you know what I'm saying, you know, you're going to have problems, but, you know, it ain't no fun when a rabbit got a gun. So, you know, a lot of times, you know, guys, you know, you might have, to, you know, guys that does that, but they know if it's, they looking for easy links. If you know that it's going to be a problem, or it's going to be some repercussion or whatever, you know what I'm saying? If they don't care, you, you know what I'm saying? They know they're going to have to, you know, they, they know the consequences that come with that. So, you know. Always had, you know, always had a, a touching, a mean touch crew. So, you know, I always had them on deck. You know what I'm saying?